Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our eighth webinar, our penultimate webinar. Uh, we have a packed program today, alhamdulillah. Um, I hope you are all enjoying the webinars. Uh, Brother Abdul Rahman is uh, on his way. He'll be joining us in a few minutes. So to stick to the uh, time slot that we've advertised and that we've told you, inshallah, we will start the program. I think he's just joined. Um, so we'll start with uh, Quran as always. And Brother Ammar Abbas will be reciting some Quran. Ammar is uh, from the great town city, Ammar, of Rochdale. And he's also based here in uh, Qatar. And he's been here for over a year and a half and he teaches uh, Quran uh, here. So Ammar, if you'd like to, please, over to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Inshallah, I'll be reciting from Surah Al Ahzab, from Ayah 21 to 24, from verse 21 to 24, inshallah. <clears throat> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أس وانت حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا ولما رأى المؤمنون الأحزاب قالوا هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله قالوا هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله وصدق الله ورسوله وما زادهم إلا إيمانا وتسليما من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبدلوا 
bedila liyajzi Allah al-sadiqin bi sidqihim wa yu'adh ذِبَلْ مُنَافِقِينَ وَيُعَذِّبَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ إِنْ شَاءَ أَوْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ ليجزي الله الصادقين بصدقهم ويعذب المنافقين إن شاء أو يتوب عليهم ويعذب المنافقين إن شاء أو يتوب عليهم إن الله كان غفورا رحيما صدق الله العظيم بارك الله فيك أمار جزاك الله خير thank you very much and إن شاء الله we hope to see you around sometime Insha'Allah, Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair, Brother Ammar. Thank you. 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 Uh, not just uh, virtually, but in, 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 in reality. And Jazakallah uh, khair, Brother Ammar, for your uh, beautiful recitation. I was just saying to Abdel Wahid before uh, we started that uh, most of the reciters uh, on uh, our webinar uh, for Hajj this year uh, come from Qatar. Uh, I don't know what's the secret, but uh, there is one question I'd like to ask you. What is uh, Protein Sheikh is all about? <laughs> <laughs> protein shake is uh, it's something that I love to do which is fitness and training so I love Quran I love fitness so I thought I would merge the two <laughs> Alhamdulillah khair, everyone you can uh, look up uh, brother Ammar uh, Abbas his videos on YouTube under protein shake inshallah and uh, enjoy his uh, beautiful recitation and also his uh, training and uh, fitness routines inshallah Jazakumullah khair. Today we will be speaking, uh, Sheikh, our dear Sheikh, respected uh, Imam uh, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim will be speaking to us about the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what we take from this, how we uh, uh, put it in practice uh, in our lives, especially for those who just performed Hajj, they are uh, clean from sins uh, as uh, they, they, they were, they are, uh, they, they were, the day they were born, and uh, their fitrah and their uh, basira is also uh, enlightened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, uh, so what's the best way to follow the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking about the sunnah uh, let us do together the takbir like we've done uh, over the last few days uh, as the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد 
Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillahi alhamd. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, our dear respected Sheikh uh, Ibrahim, uh, Imam uh, from uh, Leicester, and uh, the uh, uh, Assistant Secretary General to the Muslim Council of Britain, and a very, very passionate uh, Liverpool fan. Faddal, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim <laughs> And congratulations for the cup, by the way. Shukran, shukran, shukran. So I, in a humble way, I serve the Muslim Council of Britain. I sit on the National Council. And I have uh, served previously as the Assistant uh, Secretary General. And mashallah, we have some amazing uh, brothers and sisters carrying on that work. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Was salatu was salam wa ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ahli baytihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm so delighted and so grateful uh, to be given this opportunity to join you virtually. Uh, and to reflect on the hijra of the blessed messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sahaba radhiyallahu anhum and what lessons we may learn from that inshallah ta'ala as we all know the hijra is a very crucial and critical turning point in the history of islam in order to understand that we need to go back to the beginnings when the messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam began to proclaim that there is only one allah worthy of worship to a community that he was part of he was born in the most honorable of tribes the quraysh they had known him from childhood uh, his uncle was also very highly respected abu talib and the whole family were known to be of a very noble characteristics and background he was known to this very community as a sadiq the honest one the truthful one people trusted him with their property with their precious belongings al amin they trusted him that he would not cheat them out of their possessions and that he would be honorable in safeguarding what they had left with him in trust when he proclaimed to them al islam and that only allah should be worshiped they turned on him they did not like this idea that their forefathers who had been worshiping idols and had taught them to continue the same suddenly they are being told that that is not correct and that there is only one almighty creator a few accepted his message and we know the history of those early muslims but as time went on the people of makka uh, indeed people from his own tribe the quraysh made it extremely difficult for muslims to live in peace and in harmony and be able to practice their new found religion and way to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they began to persecute muslims indeed the blessed messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself was targeted along with many of the sahaba and the sahabiyat and indeed we see or we hear of the boycott when food drink and water was restricted from reaching the muslims until a point came when it became unbearable the suffering was of a degree that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is was rahmatun lil alamin a mercy to all of humanity to all of the creation to all of the universe he couldn't see his followers suffer in this way he instructed the very first group 
of the Muslims to undertake a hijra, a migration, and sent them to Habasha. Uh, many people refer to it as Abyssinia, the Horn of Africa, where a very kind and compassionate Christian king, Najash, ruled over his people. And so these first few Muslims left for the kingdom of Najashi, Najash, as some people refer to him, and Alhamdulillah, they found refuge, safety in that kingdom and were made welcome. But then a point came when the life of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those close to him and dear to him was also in real danger. A plot was hatched by the Kuffar, the non-believers, to kill him and his followers. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala put a rescue plan in action. What I find very interesting in the story of the Hijrah is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala could easily have intervened directly to rescue the blessed messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most beloved of the creation to him. Just as he did with Sayyidina Isa Alayhi Salam. When Isa Alayhi Salam's enemies plotted to kill him, to put him on the cross, Allah put a rescue mission in process and the angels were sent and Isa alayhi salam was rescued and taken into the heavens. So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not take our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Makkah and take him to Medina? After all, he did take him into the heavens. In Laylatul Isra'i wal Mi'raj, we learn that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ascended the al-Buraq, the animal from heaven, and swiftly made the journey from Makkah to Beit al-Maqdis, Jerusalem, and from there on into the heavens to have an audience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why did Allah not do this when it came to saving him from the persecution of the Meccans at such an early stage of a fledgling uh, religion that was trying to establish itself and take root in Makkah? For us, there is a very important lesson that yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to take care of us, to help us and to rescue us from difficulty and challenges. But he wants us also to play our part in that process. So if we examine very carefully, the year is 622, uh, Rasulullah is now aware that the Kuffar are going to make an attempt on his life. He is now doing his part with utmost reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They plan to flee for the safety of Medina where earlier groups of Muslims had gone and sent good information that the people of Medina were kind, were caring and that they would find safety and security in Medina. Al the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu to lay in his bed at night and with his best friend and most loyal companion Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu he left in the dark of the night. As we know geographically Medina is situated in a northerly direction from Makkah to Mukarrama, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam deliberately took a route going south and then turned back on himself as a ploy to mislead all those who would, ch who would chase after him. Indeed, search parties were sent after him to capture him when they realized that it was Ali who was lying in Muhammad's bed and not the Prophet himself. 
on the way, the harshness of the sun, the thirst, all the physical discomforts, they endure. And when he came to rest, they sought refuge in a cave. The cave of Thor became a sanctuary for our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said Abu Bakr They wiped off their tracks so that no one would know that they have entered this cave. Allah then sent a spider to spin a web to cover the entrance to the cave. Allah sent a bird. Some historians mention pigeons to build a nest, even to lay an egg, so that anyone who came close by would think that no human being could have entered this cave, otherwise the spider web and the nest would have been destroyed. And indeed, the enemy turned up at the entrance of the cave. And you can imagine the fear, the worry, the anxiety for both these special people to Allah, but especially to Sayyidina Abu Bakr anhu, who felt a personal responsibility to protect and safeguard the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran captures a snippet of that conversation. Many times I've thought, what kind of conversation took place in the dark of that cave, fearing the worst? إِذْ قَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ the Messenger وسلم, says to his companion, O Abu Bakr, do not worry, do not be scared, do not be afraid. Allah is with us. And for me, brothers and sisters, this is the lesson. We have to play our part in what happens to us in our life. Of course, everything is ordained by Allah. Of course, we must rely on Allah. We put our utmost trust in Allah to do what is best for us. But we have a role to play in this. Ultimately, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, they arrive in Medina. What a welcome they have. What a welcome. Tala al-Badru alayna is singing in the air of Medina to Munawwara. The children are delighted. The men and women are delighted. And a welcome is made. Now, I want us to reflect on this. That when we leave a place of difficulty, of challenges, inshallah, a place of peace, of tranquility will follow. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was deeply pained to leave Mecca, the place of his birth, the place where he grew up, the place where he played as a little boy, where he grew up and worked, he had to leave that. And now Allah is giving him comfort in Madinah Til Munawwar. We fast forward, we find that he builds a community. He purchases a land to establish Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi, ala sahibiha as salatu was salam. And then he enables the muhajirun, the migrants, the emigrants who had fled Makkah to become not just friends, but like family with the Ansar, the helpers, the people of Medina who were willing to host them and to look after them and to share things with them. And we hear some amazing stories about that hospitality and the, the union of the two communities. This again, we find a lesson in this for us, that when we come across people who have had to flee their homelands, who have had to leave everything behind, only what is on their backs. And they come to us. They come to our cities and our towns, to our country. We have to be like the Ansar. We have to help them. We have to support them, give them refuge, make them feel welcome, and help them establish themselves and restart their lives. We understand the Hijrah in this physical sense of moving from one place to another. But the hijrah, the migration is not just about relocating, leaving a place of pain and difficulty for a pain of ease and happiness, but it also has deep spiritual meanings and understandings. To move away from sin, from disobedience, 
and make that journey across to good deeds, to hasanat and to ta'a and the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all it is. It is about moving to Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we find in the hadith recorded both in Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whosoever migrates ilallahi wa rasulihi fa hijratuhu ilallahi wa rasul. If we move in the direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the direction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then our migration is for that, our hijrah is for that. We move away from shaitan, from our nafs and disobedience of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to obedience of both of them. من كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة يتزوجها فهجرته إلى ما هجر إليه. If somebody leaves one place and goes to another for financial gain, gain for business, for material development and progress, then that's what their migration is for. If they move from one place to another to be able to marry a lady, then then that's what their migration is for. So we have to be mindful that when we move from one state to another, our intention is to please Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We find that by making that move, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's help descends and it comes as we saw with the blessed messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And just a, in conclusion, to help all those hujjaj, mashallah, who have been blessed this year a very limited number to perform the Hajj, but inshallah in future as well when we have completed all our rites in Mecca and we have we are now ready to travel and to move to Madinah al Munawwara. I have seen two kinds of um, mindsets and two kinds of approaches to this, and I'll share with you the one that I really prefer and. Uh, one that really delights me. We know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that whosoever performs the hajj in the correct manner without hurting, harming anything whatsoever, then all their sins are forgiven. Raja'a ka yawmin We return back to our families like newborn babies, just as we were when our mothers gave birth to us. When we enter the blessed city of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we should rejoice. We should be happy. We should be smiling. Just imagine that all those children are singing Tala al Badru alayna, welcoming us also, the followers of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that our sins have been forgiven. And we firmly believe that all of our sins are forgiven. And we present ourselves to the Rawdah in the masjid of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, insha'Allah, purified, cleansed of all, our, of all our sins, and to say, Ya Rasulullah, here I am. I've asked Allah's forgiveness. Now I pledge myself to following your sunnah. That's the pledge I make. I'm moving away. I'm making a hijrah from how I lived my life before the hajj, before Allah forgave me all my sins, now, O oh Rasulullah, I am making a promise to you in the presence of Allah that I'm moving away from that. This is my hijrah. I'm going to move to your sunnah. I'm going to follow your lifestyle. I'm going to follow your teachings. I will learn the hadith. I will learn the sunnah and I will put them into practice. To add to our worship, if we were praying uh, Jum'ah to Jum'ah, now inshallah we pray five times a day. If we're praying the Faraid five times a day, now we make sure no Sunnah is missed. If we're praying the Sunan, we make sure the Mustahabbat and the Nawafil are also added to. We add the Tahajjud and Salat al-Duha and uh, all the other uh, extra prayers that we can do. So we are making a journey. We are moving from our previous state of a spiritual attainment to the next level, to a higher level. We are moving closer in the direction of Allah and in the direction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Here I must also remind all of us of the importance of transforming ourselves. The Hajj is supposed to transform us. That's the whole point. That's why Allah gives us a chance to start a new life, to start a new leaf, to open a new chapter in our lives, to adopt the akhlaq, 
and the characteristics of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who said that nothing will weigh heavier on the scales on the day of judgment than the character, the good character of a Muslim. We have to learn all those beautiful characteristics of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, adopt them and display them and live like that with the people. Remember when we return home from the Hajj, there is an expectation. No, I don't mean just an expectation from the people. There is an expectation from Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you have been chosen and blessed to perform the Hajj. Now you're going back home. Let's see a different you. Move away from your old self. Make that hijrah. Leave your old self behind. Move to a new you. And inshallah, that will be a sign that your hajj has been hajj mabrur and accepted hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the hajj of all those who are currently performing it. And for those who have not been able to attend this year because of the pandemic, I'm sure Allah will reward you all for the full hajj, hajj, accepted hajj, but also reward you even more for your patience, the pain that you're feeling. I feel for you. I feel your pain. May Allah reward you all. And inshallah, one day when he is ready for us, he will invite us again to his home, to his house, rather, to the house of Allah, Baytullah, in Makkatul Mukarramah, to be able to perform the Hajj. Jazakumullah khairan for this opportunity to share these thoughts with you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Uh, our dear Sheikh, Jazakallah khair. Wallahi, while you are speaking about the Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, I, uh, I comes to my memory the day we uh, when we were in Hajj uh, a few years ago and mashallah your family was there and uh, we went to see uh, uh, Ghar, uh, uh, the, the Ghar Thawr uh, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, went from uh, Ghar Thawr to uh, Medina. I can see it as if it was yesterday and then we moved from one side to another. Jazakumullah khair. And may Allah reward you abundantly Amen. for sharing Amen. your thoughts with us. And uh, may Allah bring us together in Hajj, not only virtually, but also reality uh, as well, inshallah. Amen. Amen. Uh, today has been a very difficult uh, day uh, um, um, mentally for myself. Uh, I, uh, it's, I'm following and uh, we are posting on Instagram the videos and photos. Uh, one of our brothers who is performing Hajj. Um, uh, shared with us from his tawaf and also uh, from the Kaaba, and uh, it's 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 a difficult day. I, I even forgot to show the uh, the vlogs that we uh, show on a daily basis, so we will show it now, inshallah. But uh, I, we take uh, yani solace in knowing uh, that when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tests us with a calamity or even with a blessing. Yani when, uh, um, uh, the, the test, this test doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with us or, uh, or angry with us. It's how we react to it. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu was turned away from uh, Umrah in uh, Hudaybiyah. So uh, it, it, knowing this balance and uh, learning from yourself and from the scholars, uh, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu brings peace and tranquility in, in our hearts. Yani. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallahu feekum. Inshallah, we are going to show uh, the, 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 the vlogs. These vlogs are, uh, they, they, we, we produced them last year on Hajj. We were showing, uh, uh, we were uh, uh, uploading them uh, uh, one vlog every two days so that uh, those who are here, they can follow their family who are there and bringing the Hajj experience uh, to life. Uh, today, the vlogs is about, uh, the, we will show two vlogs. Uh, they are about Medina. So our journey from Mecca to Medina, uh, it was very interesting uh, because it was by, uh, with the train. And when we booked our tickets uh, um, uh, th uh, through the train company, Al Haramain uh, Railway Services in, Mecca, in, in Saudi Arabia, the head office told us that this is the first group leaving Mecca to Medina uh, or the first uh, tickets uh, issued for Mecca to Medina by train for group of Hajjaj, inshallah. I hope uh, everyone enjoys uh, the, the, the vlogs. Bismillah. Assalamu guys. Welcome to the vlog. So today, unfortunately, we're leaving Mecca. Uh, I'm just looking at the view from my bed, actually. Look, it's, this is the view from my bed. 
but we're leaving this view today uh, very sadly and inshallah we'll get called back soon um, but we're going to Medina today and uh, Abdul Rahman gave us the announcement that we're going by train which only takes three hours and those of you who know how long the journey from Makkah to Medina is usually either by coach or by taxi it's, uh, it's around five six hours plus um, and to have it in three hours is absolutely crazy and on top of that we're going to be the first group ever uh, during Hajj to go from Makkah to Medina via train. So uh, um, stay tuned guys for the vlog and I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you in Medina inshallah. World, to teach us how to live a mercy for us all. How are we feeling? Going to Medina? Yeah, no, it's, it's a strange experience because um, you're obviously sad that you're leaving Mecca. But you said we're taking with us many, many happy memories and experiences and the com camaraderie between the groups really strong um, but, and so, but at the same time we're looking forward to going to uh, a more relaxed, peaceful place in the presence of the Prophet of the know the more I learn to live Wish that I can be somebody that can live just like you did And now that I know my life's been such a bliss I promise that I'll always keep on doing what you did Lord, make me someone just like this Do 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 Guys, what are your impressions before getting on the train? Oh, oh, I've never been, been so excited to get on the train <laughs> I'm happy that this piece is getting on the London Underground any day of the week Bye, 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 bye Do 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 Lord, make me someone just like this I'd like to try it, the star of the vlog <laughs> I'm starting to look. I don't think I'm going to pass. Alhamdulillah, we've got about five minutes and we're going to ride this uh, train to Medina, inshallah. Yeah. All oh. you can see is going towards the passengers, going towards the passengers. So let's see what's it all about. Uh, I know that we ain't travelling for eight hours. <laughs> Three hours and we're there, inshallah. To the orphans you would give Before you had to go You left us with this An amazing journey. First of all, we're going to Medina, the Prophet cities of Allah Ali The journey itself in total will take around three hours as opposed to seven, eight hours. And because it was opened only six months ago, this is the first Hajj where they're using the train. And we are the first group of 300 or so people. I think the train capacity is around 400. And we've booked over 300 seats. So alhamdulillah, almost all the train but what's the, yeah. what's the response been like? Amazing. I mean, people have loved it. They've got smiles on their faces. I've just walked up and down the carriages. They are they're happy. They're at the cafeteria now, buying themselves drinks. Um, so they're enjoying it. Some people are sleeping, of course, resting. So it's a much more comfortable ride than the, than the coach, of course. Um, it's air conditioned. So alhamdulillah, it's so far so good. What one word would you use to describe the rest of the train? Oh, so I learn to live, wish that I can be somebody that can live just like you did And now that I know, my life's forever changed I promise that I'll So we're just in the hotel room now. Um, we've settled into Medina, alhamdulillah. The train journey today was absolutely amazing. It literally left me speechless how fast it is. But um, yeah, we've said our salams to the Prophet We're just resting up now. I'm editing, obviously. But um, I hope you did enjoy today's vlog. Stay tuned for tomorrow's vlog, which I believe is the walking tour at night, um, which should be very interesting. But I hope to see you then, guys. Please do like this video. Please comment your thoughts below. And please do share this video to all your friends and family and inshallah we'll see you tomorrow all right guys time to go
remind everyone that uh, there is no instrument uh, or music uh, used in these uh, nasheeds. These are all vocals. Uh, now we got to Medina, and this was uh, the, the this vlog is uh, vlog nine now that we are going to see about uh, our program in uh, Medina, inshallah. In I make my way to Medina, the home angels and place of our beloved prophet, where all I feel is peace and so much joy around, no better place for me. Yeah. Okay, the brothers are saying it seems that uh, there is a black screen. Um, let me let me see how we can do this bismillah uh, okay okay bismillah in my dreams i make my way to Medina, the home angels and place of our beloved prophet, where all I feel is peace and so much joy around, no better place for me, yeah, Medina, Medina, Medina. So again guys, welcome to today's vlog, you join me in the ground of Masjid Al Nabawi uh, for the Haram nighttime walking tour. It's so so peaceful today. Uh, today, basically, we had a tea meeting um, in the Hilton with an amazing, amazing view. Um, and we had Juma. It's Friday today, so we prayed Juma. I don't really want to take my camera into the mosque because they don't really like that over here. But um, yeah, I'm taking it now because I just had to show you guys this Haram tour and the beauty of the Haram at night. So stick around. The night walking tour of Medina, part two. We have the first part in Mecca and the second part in Medina. Where, where, what are you going to be there? To? We cover the life of the Prophet Sallallahu his arrival in Medina, where he lived, where he used to interact with other Sahaba and different stories about his life. Medina to Nabi, Medina, Medina. What we're going to do is do what we did in Mecca, is we're going to give you a, a way to try and imagine what Medina might have been like at the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Medina, Medina, that's where I want to be. So we're here with Uncle Ash, fellow photographer. <laughs> How's the walking tour going so far? It's super, it's, it's a knowledge that we all need. Because we watch too much rubbish on TV. We don't know about our own beautiful faith. We must learn that. Forget the East Enders and um, Emily over there. Hear that, people? <laughs> yes. I'm going to learn something. You learn something which is more important. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna sign off from the vlog here in the Blessed Haram area. Uh, we just finished the walking tour, it was absolutely amazing. Zabair, he already knows he's the one, but Zabair, mate, you're the one. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you did enjoy this vlog, please do leave a like, please do share to your friends and families to share the amazing journey of Hajj and comment your thoughts on this vlog below. And we will see you tomorrow. Uh, which is actually the Ziara day, so we're going to be going to loads of interesting historic places and yeah, join us tomorrow to see what we get up to. So good guys. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. Uh, in 2017, uh, Ibrar, uh, my colleague in the office, uh, said to me, uh, there are three uh, brothers who are planning to cycle from uh, uh, London all the way to Mecca to perform Hajj. And uh, I immediately thought of uh, 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 the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he revealed in the Quran, وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ And they, the people will uh, answer the call of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam 
and they will come with every mean. Where they will come with the with the camel. They will come with the speedy, uh, yeah, with the, with aeroplanes, with the speed means and the very fast uh, means of transportation. And uh, but now, no, hardly anyone goes with. Uh, I know few people who travel by car uh, to Mecca, but to cycle, to cycle all the way from London to uh, Mecca to perform Hajj. This was, I said to him, these crazy brothers, we have to sponsor them and we have to be, we have to uh, uh, do this experience with them, inshallah. So I would like to introduce uh, our brother, uh, Rashid Ali, uh, uh, who uh, was the head of the team who cycled from uh, um, London all the way to uh, Mecca to perform uh, Hajj. Assalamu alaikum, Rashid. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you, my crazy brother? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Yourself? Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's, it's nice to see you. Long time, mashallah. Yes, jazakallah khair for having me on. Jazakallah khair for uh, taking time and uh, for uh, yani, uh, doing this journey. They, yani, it, it, it was amazing uh, to hear about it and then to live some moments of it. I lived the last part of it only, but mashallah, you, uh, you have a lot to tell us uh, uh, about this journey, inshallah. Uh, perhaps uh, after we show uh, this quick uh, video from uh, your uh, journey, inshallah. Bismillah. <laughs> Wonderful journey. Tell us, tell us what, what, how did you come up with this? SubhanAllah, just watching those clips, even now, I, I've watched that video hundreds of times. It still makes my hair stand up on my um, hand, you know, I get goosebumps. Um, it brings brings back all those memories. But um, SubhanAllah, um, it, it's, I, it, I can talk about this for days, but um, it, it was an idea basically. Um, I, I I did a small ride from Cambridge to London and I was on a bicycle and I was thinking, you know, what, what could be the biggest journey someone can do on a bicycle? And um, previously I, I did a running competition. I won a running competition. I won a ticket to Umrah. And that was my first uh, experience of Umrah. And I thought, you know, what if I can cycle to Hajj? Um, I just thought about it. I, I thought it's, it's not possible. And three years later, Alhamdulillah, it became possible um, with some support from your support from Dome Tours and the charity I work for, Muslim Charity. Um, we worked together and um, I spent about 10 months planning it, Alhamdulillah, and we did it. Um, it's a great experience. How long did it take you to prepare yani, physically to for this journey? You know, um, it was very hard to actually prepare. What had happened was that um, back in 2017, I left on 1st of July. So we had Ramadan previous to that. So during Ramadan, obviously there was no training. And um, so I didn't train. I only had like six days after Ramadan to train. Well, I, I was just up getting back to normal eating. Um, I left, but my plan was that I'm gonna use the first two weeks of the ride as a training. So I did smaller mileage. I did 100 kilometers a day instead of doing 150. Um, slowly, gradually increased as I went along. And by two weeks, third week, Alhamdulillah, my body was quite ready and I was in a good shape. Mashallah, a yani small amount, which is 100 ki uh, ki kilometer, 100 miles, small amount. Yeah, you don't, yani, it's, it's, a, it's a big uh, number, Mashallah, may Allah reward you. How, how long, how many days did it take you to complete the journey? 
So it took me 56 days to complete the journey, um, 70 days altogether to complete Hajj afterwards. Um, but actual riding was 41 days. The issues were um, when we got into Istanbul, getting across from Istanbul, all the way from here, I went to France, which I took a ferry. And then France through Germany, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Bulgaria, Greece, Turkey, into Antalya. And the idea was to go across from Antalya to Egypt, Alexandria. And that's where the complication, I was stuck there for four days um, because obviously, uh, you know, they don't allow you to go by land, you have to go by air. Um, so I was on a dispute with them and at the end, finally I got through. Same when I got to Egypt, I went from Alexandria to Cairo to Hugada, and from Hugada I had to go across the Red Sea and I was stuck there for four days. So about 12 days of getting stuck, but 41 days of cycling. So at one, at, at, you must have had yani, several experiences yani, and, uh, and challenges and difficulties and, and good moments and uh, high emotions and low emotions. And uh, at, at what point in the journey did you think that's it? This journey is not going to, you are not going to get to Hajj on time. You know, um, so when we started on 1st of July, we started from the uh, famous Olympic Park in central London. Um, and there was 30 other brothers that wanted to join me just to be part of that special journey, but they were only going up to Paris. Um, so we took two days to get to Paris. So when we got to the Paris, the plan was that they're going to come back the 28th and leave me and my Kore Abdul Hanan, who was going to continue on. And I had brother Shubi in the van. But three, three kilometers to Paris, Abdul Hanan had fallen off his bike and tore his uh, ligament on his leg. Next morning, we didn't know how bad it was. Next morning, we woke up and Abdul Hanan was in tears and his leg had swollen up really big. And um, so the other 28 now have left. So there's us three left. And uh, Abdul, we spent the, that Monday morning in hospital with Abdul Hanan. So I was thinking, sitting there thinking, oh my God, Abdul Hanan's not going to cycle. I'm on my own now. And we're one day behind because we spent one day in the hospital. So I've got to make up another 100 kilometers. And I'm thinking, yeah, like, is this going to happen? I've got 95% of the journey left and I'm on, on my own. And, and, and I just thought, you know, let's just take a day at a time. Let's just make zikir. And that was what I was doing. You know, I was on the bike eight hours a day. And all I could do is make zikir. And I had my phone there, listening to Quran and just making, you know, just thinking about the vision of, you know, what the car is going to be like when I get there and things like this. And the cause I was doing it to raise money for street children around the world um, to help them. So those are the things that motivated me. And um, I mean, the journey was so, I mean, going through each country. And, and one of the beautiful things that I always remember is once I, you know, I was really looking forward to entering the Muslim world because through Europe, as we was going through, there was difficulty in eating halal food. So there was about two weeks we survived just on cheese sandwich and margarita pizza, nothing else. Um, so I was really pleased once we got into Bosnia and um, Croatia and obviously Turkey. Um, but the beauty of that entry in the Muslim world was also to look at the architect of the masjids, because we all using the masjid to place to go and refresh, do a salah and take a break. And so looking at the architect and their designs, and each country had their own little touches on the uh, masjids, which was beautiful to see all the way through to Mecca. Um, that's something I'll, I won't forget. Um, the dangerous bits were I got chased by wild animals that I didn't expect, I, I, I didn't know about. Um, once we went into Bulgaria, Bulgaria had one of the highest infest of um, wolves. I got chased by wolves. I got chased by wild dogs in uh, Turkey, um, Bosnia, Croatia. There was once in Bosnia, we stuck up in a mountain with grizzly bears. Alhamdulillah, we got away, but there was a big sign saying grizzly bears. And I thought, well, no, this is the last place we want to be stuck. Um, and what happens, the road finishes. Um, the road was actually on Google map, but when they went to build it, they never finished building it. So then all of a sudden on top of the mountain, road finishes and a sign says grizzly bears. And we got so worried, luckily the locals came to our rescue and then they, they, they asked what we was doing. We told them 
and, and they were Muslims. Uh, and they said, oh, come to our house. They fed us, took us home. Then they took us around to another area and said, oh, you take this road and you can carry on. And so Alhamdulillah, it was a great experience. So, so you, had, you had the van following you, but you are cycling. And uh, this van was uh, to carry the food and your bags and logistics, etc. That's right. And I had three other bikes in there because the road surface were different. We had to go on different terrains, so there were different bikes in there. And we was ready to, I, I was ready to sleep in the van, knowing that some places we might not have hotels because there were like some areas for 100 miles, there was no human uh, around or there wasn't anything around, it was just mountains and rocks. So by Alhamdulillah, we always found something. Look, I, I drive around in London and uh, sometimes we cross over to Europe and sometimes I see, you know, fellow, fellow crazy people cycling on the motorway and you don't know what they are cycling for or why they are cycling or, you know, it's, uh, just book a, a plane ticket or a train ticket and uh, or, or even drive in a car. So when you, you were uh, riding, you were cycling with uh, a, a big uh, plan you had a, 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 a you know and an very ambitious plan and a very dangerous one as well and when you and and everyone around you don't know what you are doing but when you got into muslim countries uh, again people were must must have seen the british flag they they've seen you cycling and this uh, van logistics van is following you uh, uh, did, how did you tell them as you said when they came to your rescue but in other situations did you tell them you're going for hajj Yes, yes, sir. and so, well, yes, like you just mentioned, there was a flag, Union Jack flag stuck on behind my back. And obviously because of my helmet, my glasses, and my clothes, that you could tell that I, I wasn't a local person. So every now and then when I stopped somewhere, there were times I, I sat in a restaurant because, you know, I was missing my rice and curry and someone treated me to a restaurant. Um, and we was chatting and someone heard our conversation from the other table and they said, are you guys really going to Hajj on a bike? He said, yeah, there's a bicycle outside. And they, you know, they were so pleased and happy. They paid our food bill. Um, there were other occasions people stopped us on the road and, and they said, well, where are you going from, coming from? I said, yeah, London. They said, all the way. I said, yes, and I'm going all the way to Saudi Arabia. And, and these were non-Muslims. And they said, why are you doing this? And I said, well, I'm doing it to help some children around the world who live on the streets. And they pulled out 20 euros, 40 euros, 100 euros, and they, they said, please take this from us. Um, so yes, um, I've, I've made so many friends along the way, and I'm still in contact with a lot of them all through the way that I've met. Some even cyclists, I've met many cyclists. Some going to Iraq, some going to different places. We met on, on road uh, and we became friends. Um, so yes, Alhamdulillah, met loads of people. Uh, you, you must have had some weak moments where you thought, you know what, I've done a thousand kilometer or two thousand kilometers and uh, I've done, you know, what I can and uh, le le let me take a short trip by uh, in the van, I'm not feeling well. Uh, uh, how did you overcome those or did you not? So, yes, I mean, one of the hardest, toughest bit was, I, I don't know if you can see actually on the camera, but my, my hands are still recovering from the burns from the sun. It was uh, 21 degrees in London. By the time I got to Turkey and Egypt, it was in the 40. And I'm on that bike every day for eight to 10 hours. Um, so my skin was literally just burning. Um, I couldn't any moisturize anything I put because of sweat and everything, it just came off. Um, that was very hard for me to, to take. And I thought, you know, to give up. Um, even at, at, at times at night, my legs were hurting me, my body was aching, sitting like this position all day. Um, but when I got to back to the hotel and I looked at some of the messages that people were sending me saying, you know, make dua for me when you get to Arafat, please do this for me. And then people sent me letters, messages, emails, and they were saying, keep going, keep going. Uh, so I slept and in the morning I woke up and I thought, you know what, I can't, I can't stop. Let me go, let me just try 50 kilometers, forget 100. And then I'd do 50 and someone would, because it was live on Facebook, someone would say, well, please go a bit further and I'll, I'll donate a bit more money. And, and, and they pushed me all the way along. Alhamdulillah, we managed to do it. Um, our support vehicle, we lost our support vehicle when we got to Turkey. We couldn't take it any beyond. We left it in a car park, paid for a month. And then I just went by, by bicycle and that was the end of When When you left London, 
Yeah, mm -hmm. not have visa for Hajj because visas yeah. were not uh, is issued at the time. So you had you arranged the, a second passport where you left one in the office and you traveled with one passport. Did it cross your mind that uh, maybe you know some something will happen and you'll not get this visa? You know you, you are leaving London now and your visa should come after four weeks or six weeks. And did this come uh, did this come cross your mind? Definitely, definitely. Even now, you know, many have tried to do this journey on a bicycle. No one's actually managed to do it all the way. I'm the only one actually that actually covered that kind of distance um, anywhere, uh, from, especially from UK. And I, I sometimes say, how did this happen? How did I get through all these difficulties? Because I wasn't, I, I'm not a professional cyclist or anything, and I had about three years of experience. But visa, yes, the visa issue was one of the biggest thing I had to tackle and I kind of took a risk. I, I left a passport with my colleague to, because obviously the Hajj Minister, they only issued the visa one month before you travel. I traveled two months before. Um, and it's only, I, I, I had doubted myself that I'm actually gonna be able to do this. It's only when I got to Turkey and I, I stopped at the Blue Mosque, Blue Mosque and, and I thought to myself, hold on, you, you can actually maybe make this. Maybe you can get there. You are, I feel I'm in the Muslim world now. Now I felt I've left Europe because you know, going through Europe is, is very similar to London, going through France and Germany, everything else. But once I got to Istanbul, I thought, you know, I have a good chance of making this happen. And that's when my colleague, I got to Egypt and he flew into Cairo with my other passport. And then when I saw the other passport with the visa in it, I thought, Mashallah, this is this is my chance. I, I have a good chance of making it. So, in front of the Blue Mosque is also the Blue Mosque is also known as Sultan uh, Sultan Ahmed uh, Mosque. Yes, the Mosque of Sultan Ahmed, and uh, right opposite to the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, uh, it's uh, it Sophia. The, at that time it was the mu museum Hagia Sophia. Yeah, yes. Allah, yes. and look at the time now. It is. Uh, Yani, a great uh, um, mosque in, in, the, in the heart of Europe, Hagia Sophia Mosque, um, where they started praying in that mosque for the first time after so many years uh, last uh, Juma. But you, you ran into some issues in Egypt. Yes, yes, in Egypt. But just in Turkey, Turkey actually also gave me a really good boost. Because I, I, I had four days there, I went and visited the top uh, the top cafe uh, museum and obviously there's you know very important artificials from Islamic history there and when I saw some of those stuff and I thought these were these are great great people that walked this earth you know uh, you know and took some inspiration from that and that really I thought you know I need to do this um, because I was also you know representing Muslims around the world you know to show that we do good work as well um, Gone into Egypt, yes, we, we run into difficulty because um, movement was very restricted and, and they couldn't understand that somebody came from London and, and is on a cycle to Hajj. They, they just thought, no, this is not true. So the act actually, I had police escort for three days just behind me. At the end, they gave up because I'm going 10 miles an hour speed and they're behind me 10 hours, they got bored. After three days, they said, you know, carry on. Um, but uh, I also visited Al Azhar University en route. So that was very nice. Uh, and all the students there came to meet me. And, you know, I spent a, a, a day with them. And that was a very good experience. Al Azhar is a, is a monument, uh, not a monument, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a lighthouse. It's been set up for over a thousand years. Sheikh uh, Ibrahim, uh, I believe, graduated from Al Azhar as well. I also graduated from Al Azhar, alhamdulillah. Oh, okay, okay, and, and, and Al Azhar is in a very historical part of uh, Cairo where it, uh, it over uh, it sees the mosque of uh, Imam Al Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet. And uh, it's, it's an area which is full of, of history, full of uh, ilm, full of uh, ulama, full of uh, yani sp uh, spiritual uh, spiritualities and uh, uh, great uh, people, great uh, yani, uh, pioneers of Islam. Who, 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 so how did you feel when you got to Al-Azhar? When you know oh. all this? 
you know, I was so emotional. Um, you know, I, I, I just had to pinch myself every now and then to, to make sure that this was real. It, was, uh, it wasn't a dream because what had happened is over the, after five weeks, my, my mind kind of became numb because every day I was peddling and just concentrate one thing. I didn't worry about work. I wasn't worried about anything just, just to get to Allah's house. And on route, when I met there was a situation like this, uh, and it really sank into me that you know what I what I was about to do. Um, and Subhanallah, you know, when I met these brothers, and you know they they were, you know, I was sitting with them, eating with them in their way on the floor and sharing their food. Went to some of their houses, and I thought, you know, what a beautiful way to do Hajj, you know. Um, the, you, you know, this could not have been possible without the support of your home, of your family. Uh, tell us about that. Did they tell you you are crazy? Don't do it. What are you going to do? You How can you leave us behind? Yes, yes. I had... Uh, sorry, I'm just going to talk to my phone. Sorry about, sorry about that. Um, so... And I, just before I left to Hajj, I had four daughters. And when I went to Allah's house previously, after that winning that running competition, I, I prayed to Allah to, Allah to bless me with a son. Um, and just before I went on the Hajj, by two months prior to that, he came into the world. So he was two months when I left. And with five kids now, four daughters, one son, and I left my wife. Um, and I said, you know, I've got to really go. And she thought, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get there. I'm going to return back halfway or something. Um, so it, it was very tough for her. And without her help, I wouldn't have been able to do this journey. Um, because um, looking after five kids, and it was during the school holidays, so they were at home. I mean, right now, I'm experiencing what it's like because of COVID. They're stuck at home. It's hard work with five children. So Alhamdulillah, she really you know, backed me up on that and really helped me um, not having to worry about my children. So every night, I did phone them from the hotel room, speaking to them, making sure they're all good. Um, but I think by the seventh, eighth week, my youngest daughter didn't even recognize me because my beard had gone this big, my hair was all over the place. And so they found it hard to recognize me. So, so now you are, you, you left your uh, family at home, your four daughters, <laughs> your two month old son. Uh, <laughs> you, you've uh, uh, disappointed everyone who said you are not going to do it. You are, uh, you've crossed Europe, uh, you crossed into the Muslim world. Uh, you managed to get through all the security and uh, border uh, controls. And uh, you received your passport uh, finally. And all of a sudden you are not allowed to board the ship between uh, Cairo, uh, Egypt and uh, Jeddah. Yes. What did you feel then? You know, when I got to Egypt, my only imagination now picture was looking at, you know, the bridge where you have in Jeddah, as you go from Jeddah to Makkah, the Quran bridge. And the, that it, it myself, remarks the Haram. Uh, this is the uh, yes, boundary yes. of the Haram, yes. Yes, and I could imagine myself just right, cycling through underneath that bridge. That was the image stuck in my head. You know, I, I've been through all the landmarks in the countries, Paris and Germany, everywhere, else, uh, Blue Mosque. And, but this was the cream of the cake, basically. This is the best one. And when they said to me, oh, yes, you have visa, but your visa only allows you to fly in, not buy land. And I said, well, I can't do that because I promised everybody I'm going to cycle this route. So I was stuck there four days debating. So what the, I had to do, so I had to take a flight from Cairo to Jeddah. Now, Hugada is about another 300 miles away from Cairo. So I said, okay, fine. I'll still cycle to Hugada like I promised, go to the port. And because I had a, a live app that was monitoring my progress. So someone, if someone wants to follow me today, they can look it up on Strava and, I, and it has all my performance about how much I covered, the details, how fast I went, how much calories I burned. So I said, I, I need to have it on record. So I rode there and then I said, right, now you can put me in a taxi. We got a taxi from Hurghada back to Cairo. And then I put my bike in a suitcase and we got on a plane. And as I got to the airport, um, 
we have my colleague pulled out two passports <laughs> and they said oh it turns into a room so how do you have two passports so we explained what we was doing and then they they saw some of the articles and the next minute they were taking selfies they were happy with us <laughs> and they took us straight onto the plane they escorted us so we had a really good service but the best bit was when we got into Jeddah. So now we're on a plane. We because, because you met me. Uh, yes, yes. No, 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 I'm only joking. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. I, I, I you remember, took my worries away. I, I remember seeing you, obviously, for people, you know, just to know, you are, when you came into Cairo, you were told you will not be able to take the ship from Horgada, which is in the south, uh, southern yes. part of uh, Egypt, and it's right across the Red Sea from... Uh, uh, Jeddah. So you still decided to cycle all the way south, 300 miles, and then come back to Cairo to fly out of Cairo into Jeddah. When yes. you came out of the passport control, I was there in the Hajj terminal, and you were worried, you were concerned, you were burnt, you were completely, you know, burnt, I can see, you know, on your arms, and you were uh, in, in Ihram. And you were saying, they, my cycle, they took my bicycle. How, how, I, I need to cycle to Mecca. And tell, tell me, this is how I saw you. You tell me how you felt then. Uh, you know, like, yes, so I'm in my ram now. So I've just stepped out of the plane and we're walking past these security guys, these, these guys in police uniform uh, and they speak in Arabic. I don't understand Arabic. And all I heard them say, Rashid Ali. And I thought, oh my God, I'm in trouble. So they thought, well, they're not going to know who Rashid Ali is. I'm in Nehrama, so is everybody else. So I tried to walk past them. Try to sneak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought, if I quietly just go past, they won't know. I remember someone, one of them grabbed me by my hand. And they said, are you Rashid Ali? And I looked at him worried. And I thought, I better tell him the truth. I said, yes. He said, oh, mashallah, we've been waiting for you. I said, how did you know I was Rashid Ali? He said, because you have your helmet. I had my bike helmet under my arm. Um, so that gave it away. So he said, that's how I knew it was you, but we've been waiting three hours. Um, so he said, don't worry, because I looked around, I saw hundreds of people at the airport waiting around to get out. They said, don't worry, you don't have to wait there. You can come with us. They took me out with them 15 minutes straight out through the security and everything. I was really happy thinking, yes, that's it. I don't have to wait. I can go straight cycling. They said, oh, by the way, you can't cycle any longer. I said, what do you mean? They said, no, you're not allowed to cycle here. You, uh, and then you have to be with a group. You're not with a group. But, uh, and I was so at that. So I thought, let me get out the airport first and, and, and let's see what's outside. Um, so when I got outside, that's when I saw you and I met you. And, you know, but I was still, you know, they, uh, my concern was how do I, how do I finish? Because I've done 95% of the journey. It was just what, about 80 kilometers to do, 70, 80 kilometers. And, you know, I was tired, I was hungry, um, but all I knew is that I need to connect. And I remember, you know, even uh, screaming to everyone, look, I need to cycle, I need to cycle. Even I was telling you to do something. There was reporters there. They were even saying, Rashid, you can't cycle. This is how it is. And, and I remember getting on the coach and everyone speaking to me and saying, oh, you know, yeah, we saw you cycle. I was there miserable, unhappy. They didn't understand what it was. Um, and and we, we spent a week trying to get the permission for you to cycle out of Jeddah airport. And uh, then eventually, we had uh, to agree with the Hajj ministry that uh, as, soon, as soon as you arrive, they will uh, receive you uh, at the plane, and then we will arrange uh, for you to go to Mecca on a coach, but I will bring you back to Jeddah in order to continue the last trip of your uh, journey, which was 97 or 96 kilometers. And uh, you were hysterical, oh, I have to cycle, and I said to you, don't worry, go to Mecca, and I will bring you back to Jeddah to cycle from uh, Jeddah to uh, uh, Mecca. Mecca. But there was a big surprise waiting for you when once you got into Mecca, we, you ate something, you refused to do your Umrah. We came back to, uh, to Jeddah, and uh, the following day, we went to the British consul, uh, consulate, where the British consul general met you, took the selfies with you, the media outlets came and interviewed you, and then we had prepared a surprise for you. 
Yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, yes, when we got, to, when you took me to Makkah and, you know, everyone was going to do Umrah, I, and I refused. reason I refused was that I thought I didn't deserve it because I haven't finished what I promised people. Um, so I thought, you know what, I need to go back and do this, then I will be happy. And yes, when you had took me back and said to me that, there's, you know, when, I, when we got back to that hotel, I remember we, we sat down at night, it was very late, we ate in some restaurant and, and then we went to the hotel. And, and it's only that even through the night I didn't sleep, thinking, you know, what could go wrong now? Can, will this still happen? Um, but then in the morning we went to a consulate, yes, it was beautiful. And I, <laughs> They had a lovely buffet of food ready for us, but and I was hungry. But because of the reporters, I didn't get a chance to eat. Um, so I was still hungry. Then when we went out, there was a big surprise of the Jeddah cyclist. All these cyclists from Jeddah, they came and they joined. It was very beautiful for them to join me for 10 kilometers. So the Jeddah, we arranged the, with the Jeddah uh, Cyclist Association. It was uh, on a Friday right yes yes it was on a friday and uh, they uh, they came in order to uh, join you from the british consulate uh, in jeddah uh, up to the uh, beginning of the motorway the uh, haramain uh, motorway that uh, takes you from jeddah to mecca let us watch that uh... The greatest season of our assembling To journey and purify their souls All the people from all nations Gather in one place from around the world Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik Inna alhamda wa ni'amata Laka wal mulk there's no distinction, a king and poor man Before the Lord now all stand side by side Two pieces of cloth are seen as honor For today all will be dressed in white Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik Inna alhamda wa ni'amata Laka wal mulk la sharika laka the camps of Mina, the plains of Arafah, with every step there's meaning sublime. Muzdalifa, they'll never feel more home, with the sky as the roof for tonight. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'amata. All follow closely Hajar Ibrahim It's a tale that took place long ago Had they both then known Allah loved it so To see this journey even lived and be told Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik la uh, cycling in in, uh, in in cyclist gear it, it brings tears to my eyes. It was the longest <laughs> longest journey I have ever made between Jeddah and Mecca, <laughs> uh, driving behind you, the uh, arranging the police and uh, people offering food all uh, along the way. Uh, but uh, cycling in Ihram, yani, uh, how did this go for you? Uh, yes, uh, you know, um, we cyclists are so concerned about what we wear because, um, like I'm wearing one now, we, we kind of wear these so that the, air, uh, the, the wind doesn't affect us. So, uh, yeah. But obviously having an ihram which was very loose and it was waving everything and it, it was very difficult because at times it was getting into my chain on the bike, in the wheel. Um, so it was quite difficult, but Alhamdulillah we managed, we managed it. Um, I, and I even, you know, broke a couple of was wearing my helmet and, and, and my shoe, uh, which we had to do a, a extra kurbani for at the end. Um, but, you know, I thought, you know, uh, this is an image that people don't see every day. And like you said, 
there were people on the on the street stopping us, offering us dates, water, and um, taking pictures. And obviously, they knew that you know we, we were we came from somewhere abroad, and we we going for Hajj. Um, when you arrived in Arafat, what did you oh, feel? Oh, Arafat, you know. Ar so when we joined, by the way, you know. Uh, I must mention that Brother Abdul Hanan, even with his injury, he couldn't bear to watch me because he was in the van watching me every day pedaling. After nine days, when the doctor said that he needs to have an operation and stay off the bike for 21 days, he jumped back on after eight days and completed the rest of the journey. That's how determined this young man was because he said, I want to do Hajj in that special way. I will never ever get this opportunity again. And subhanAllah, so yes, he, he was a very brave man. When we got to um, Mina, I remember, and uh, you took us for our first uh, day where we went to Jamarat, and I saw that long walk where people were making. And I remember asking one of the brothers, a member of staff at uh, Don Tours, saying, oh, brother, do you think you, uh, you can get my bike for me? <laughs> and he brought my bike over, and the bike was in the um, uh, Minar tent and then the next day I used the bike to go to Jamarat you know, so I went up and down twice because it's pretty easy doing it on a bike and there were people looking at me strangely some recognized me some didn't some wanted to know what am I doing I got stopped by a couple of times by the police um, but then I was telling them that I'm going to their media houses and what I was doing and so Alhamdulillah they, they, they um, allowed me but it was a great experience having ha, having it, done it on a bike, and obviously the rest of the other brothers that were doing Hajj there, they all got to see me, and uh, we had a great time. Uh, we, I am, I am a bit, uh, I, I am aware that it is Maghrib time now. Yes. So just in uh, in a few seconds, I want you to uh, tell everyone what is your next uh, cycling plan is going to be, inshallah. My next cycling is actually on 8th of um, August, next, uh, sat, not this uh, following Saturday, we're cycling from Cambridge to London uh, with 120 other brothers for an event. But what I would like to say is that, inshallah, for everyone to keep watching, me and I spoke to you briefly that Domto might be doing something very special, similar to London to Makkah. Inshallah, do watch out for that. Jazakallah khair. And Jazakallah khair to Brother Abdul, Manna, uh, Abdul Hanan and Suba and uh, the, the, everyone who participated in making this uh, a reality uh, today. Uh, you know, it, it is not an easy journey. It, is, uh, it, was very, it must have been full of excitement, but you have uh, a, a very um, a big achievement that uh, you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and you say, I fulfilled your words. I came on bicycle when everyone was coming by uh, uh, aeroplane and by, uh, uh, by road, by cars. So Amin. Amin. Allah khair. may Allah accept, may Allah accept, may Allah accept, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invite us all to hajj despite all the challenges, despite all the difficulties, sometimes we feel down, sometimes we feel uh, uh, up. Insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, uh, invite us to his house again and again and again. Dear brothers and sisters, Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, stay uh, connected on Instagram, on Facebook. We are sharing, we started sharing today um, live images and live videos from uh, Mecca and uh, from Mina and tomorrow inshallah the day of Arafat we have also uh, very important and very uh, uh, nice surprises for everyone from Arafat and from Muzdalifah inshallah Jazakumullah khairan Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk A'udhu billahi samil alim na shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa al-Asr Inna al-insana lafi khusr إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين